Would you describe yourself as a feminist? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. The Prime Minister has a popularity problem with female voters. A number of polls have shown women are more likely than men to view Boris Johnson as dishonest. Most recently, a Delta poll survey shows 43% of women think it's a bad thing he's become Prime Minister. And when given a choice of 12 words to describe their feelings, six positive and six negative, one in three women picked terrified. And what do you think of Boris Johnson? He's a <laughs> Something I can put on air? Oh. What's a swear you word I can say this. that you can air? Do you think Boris Johnson's a feminist? No. Why? Um, because he's just never portrayed anything that way. I think he's a straight talker, shoots from the hip, and we've had enough of pussyfoot and round Boris all the way. I don't think it's a case of being a feminist or not being a feminist. I just think across, across a whole broad of sort of ethics, he just doesn't really have a relationship particularly to people. I don't think he likes women at all. So what accounts for this uneasiness among female voters? We do know that levels of trust appear, at least at the moment, to be higher among men than they are among women. Now, that may, of course, change, but if I was to speculate, I would say that that may well be linked to issues around the number of children that he has and, indeed, the nature of his personal relationships. In the past, it has been shown that women are more distrusting of people in such circumstances than men. Boris Johnson is a self-described feminist. A feminist is somebody who believes, who believes fundamentally, who believes fundamentally in the equality of human beings and the equality of the sexes. That's what I believe in. As Foreign Secretary, he pledged £212 million of UK aid money towards schooling for girls. Educate girls and you, and you, you help to solve the problems of the world. That's why but what does his voting record years, say? When it comes to women having autonomy over their bodies, Boris Johnson has always abstained on abortion legislation, so we don't actually know his position. He has, however, voted against removing the tampon tax, the VAT charge on sanitary products. Then there's the history of controversial columns. In the 2005 election, he declared, voting Tory will cause your wife to have bigger breasts. He's called women at a Labour Party conference hot totty and claimed they were backing Labour because of the fickleness of their sex. In an article marking his exit as Spectator editor, his advice to his successor about their female publisher was just pat her on the bottom and send her on her way. More recently, of course, he's described women who choose to wear a niqab as letterboxes and bank robbers. All this may well have added to his lack of popularity among women. Meanwhile, opposition leaders Jeremy Corbyn and Joe Swinson don't seem to have the same issue. Back when David Cameron was Prime Minister, it was often said that, uh, that he had a problem with women and that, that his whole flashman mentality uh, was not resonating well with them. And so it's certainly something they'll be aware of. Uh, in terms of what they're doing with it, well, focusing on things like the NHS, which we've seen, uh, we've seen recently, historically plays well with women. So what can Boris Johnson do now to change the way he's perceived? Well, with me now are the chair of Conservative Friends of Afghanistan, Shabnam Nasimi. The Labour Party parliamentary candidate and director of class think tank Pfizer Shaheen is in Birmingham. And from Kent, the Conservative peer, Baroness Patient Wheatcroft. Welcome to you all, ladies. Um, if I can start with you first of all, Shabnam Nasimi. He says he's a feminist. How has Boris Johnson actually behaved as a feminist? Well, first of all, um, the fundamental principle of feminism and conservatism is the belief in equality of opportunity. And the, and the, the, the party has worked for over centuries uh, in, in, on this matter with the introduction of the 1980 representation of uh, Yes, but what's, Bo Act. what's Boris Johnson done? Well, Boris Johnson, uh, his track record really speaks for itself. Um, as uh, mayor of, of London, City Hall, the top team, 50% of it comprised of women. Uh, as foreign secretary, he advocated and campaigned for 12 years of quality education for girls all over the world. Um, and with the diverse cabinet that we see today, his actions prove that uh, he is a feminist and he will continuously advocate for women's rights. OK. Faisal Shaheen, you're a Labour politician, so I don't expect you to express love for Boris Johnson. But are you suggesting that women have serious cause for concern because he's in number 10? 
Well, I think that report just there spoke at length at all of the different things that Boris Johnson has said. And let's remember that in his new hard right cabinet, he's appointed Jacob Rees-Mogg. Now, Jacob Rees-Mogg believes that even women that have been raped don't have the right to um, abortion. So, you know, I think a, a lot of women out there have looked at the history of what Boris Johnson has said and what he's done and who he's picked to be in his cabinet and quite rightly said, actually, this is a man that isn't a friend of women. Um, but look, it's much wider than that. When you look at polls over the last few days, uh, Boris Johnson's government is incredibly unpopular. 75% of people are already uh, fed up and uh, don't think that he's doing a good job. So look, this is a much bigger issue here. Yes, women are right to question whether he's a feminist and what he's going to do for women. But there's a broader issue about the way in which this country feels towards him. Baroness Wheatcroft, how do you feel when you hear these polls about a Conservative Prime Minister? I think it's very difficult not to agree with them. Um, I'm afraid that in Boris Johnson we have somebody who would have sold his grandmother and much more to become Prime Minister. And he's got what he wants. But I don't know that anybody's terribly clear about what he wants to do with that, other than take us out of, of the Euro European Union um, on October the 31st, which I believe is a disastrous thing to do. OK. Shabna Nassimi, how do, what do you think about what they've just said and the fact that one in three women use the word terrified to describe the way they felt about him being in number 10? Well, let's focus on what the Conservative Party has achieved when it comes to gender equality. The Conservative Party have elected two prime ministers in Parliament as leaders. The Conservative Party were the first party to, uh, to give women the right to vote. But you keep talking about the party. Let's talk about the man himself. The, 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 Boris Johnson's the leader of the, uh, the, uh, the Conservative Party. Like myself and many other Conservative activists, we advocate for, for gender equality, for women's rights, and like myself and other members of parliament and activists that are female, uh, we will continuously ensure that the party stays uh, in support of, of equal pay, of uh, uh, ensuring that we have a childcare system uh, for women, uh, ensuring that uh, we end period poverty. And he has campaigned uh, very openly together with many activists, uh, significant activists, on ending FGM in the UK um, and, uh, and supporting them uh, uh, with uh, the global challenge as well. So let's talk about the track record. What has he been able to achieve? What the Conservative Party has been able to achieve? And less on what comments have been made uh, and what, he, you know, what, what may have been taken out of context. Pfizer Shaheen, it's about policy. It's not about comments. These are just jokes, aren't they? I mean, if you want to talk about the Conservative Party's record on women, just look at austerity, the public sector spending cuts, um, which Boris Johnson voted for, which have disproportionately hit women. So 83% of the cuts have fallen on the shoulders of women. And when you look at who's been most affected, it's women of colour. So, yes, let's look at the Conservative Party record. Let's look at Boris Johnson's record. And again and again, and we see that he is not delivering for women. Now, when we think about what's going to happen now with potentially a no-deal Brexit, this terrible terrifying idea that Boris Johnson may even undemocratically uh, squat and hold us captive in government and not stand down even if there is a vote of no confidence. Now, where okay. does that leave all types of policies well, in this country? Well, Pfizer, Pfizer, it's worth pointing out the Labour Party have never had a female leader, so you've not got a great track record yourselves. Well, look, I think that's a, a point about leadership and um, representation that is a fair point to make. But when you have women that aren't uh, thinking about feminist issues, that aren't delivering for women, then what's the point? So I said this about, for instance, that, yes, we have Priti Patel as Home Secretary, for instance, but is it progress to have brown people supporting other brown people? You know, the point of representation is to have those voices there so that groups that are often ignored in policy do get voice in those rooms when decisions are made. And unfortunately, we haven't seen that with even Margaret Thatcher. We saw that with uh, Theresa May, because you can see that in austerity policy, which has disproportionately okay. affected women. Uh, Baroness Wheatcroft, the idea that NHS investment is a strategy to woo female voters, do you think something like that would work? I think women are essentially sensible in the decisions that they take when they vote. Just saying that one is a feminist and then voting the way that, that your introduction said Boris Johnson had voted in important matters for women indicates that he's simply saying what he wants people to hear. I would love to see more money going into the NHS if this country can afford it and if it's well spent. I think what we're getting at the moment is a lot of money that's already being pledged 
being pledged again and promises made in advance of an impending general election uh, don't always get honoured. But I do think women are clearly very, very worried about the pros prospects for this country under a no-deal Brexit. And that will affect the NHS, it will affect food, it will affect families, it will affect all the issues okay, that women you. really care thank about. Thank you. Shabna Massini, you are part of the changing face of the Conservative Party. Boris Johnson is a bit of a liability for people like you, isn't he? Well, actually, in comparison, he has stood for a, a diverse parliament to ensure that when, when we uh, discuss policy agendas, it's, it shapes the people that we, uh, the, the British people that we seek to govern. Uh, organisations such as Women to Win, the Conservative Women's Organisation, and 5050 Parliament campaign, of which I'm an, I'm an, an ambassador of, uh, pr prove, uh, prove the statement completely wrong that. The Conservative Party and Boris Johnson actively encourages women to stand and bring in a different percep uh, uh, per perception okay. so that we can ensure that women's rights are being addressed. We're going we're to have to leave it there. Shabna Nassimi, Faiza Shaheen and Baroness Patient Wiscroft, thank you so much for joining us. Chris.